Hey folks, Alan Mandic, Mandic Really here, and this is my 3D printing studio, at least the portion of it you're used to seeing. But what if I told you that the space is actually quite a bit bigger than that? In reality, this is a little under 600 square feet worth of garage space that is my studio, and more than half of it has been dedicated to junk for the most part. It's not junk, it's all the stuff I've magpied over the years, but it's space that I wanna be making use of moving forward. I've already got some studio lights up in this area so I can just come into the space, turn them on and have a well-lit area to work on maker and DIY projects that I can film and make the content about. The problem is right now, it's such a crowded mess of a space, we need to better situate and organize it. Those toolboxes need to move, the stuff on that wall needs to move, the shelving unit and this one over here both need to end up against that wall over there. We just need to set up a space where I can actually build things and show you folks the process. My partner and I sat down and we sketched out a whole plan for the layout of the existing stuff and maybe some new stuff coming into this space so we can make better use of it. And I can even gain a little bit on the 3D printing side as well. First things first, let's get things straightened up a little bit so we can start moving things. Then we're gonna build some workbenches in this space. We started off by unloading all the shells we needed to move across the studio and sorting the mostly blow molded cases of tools into what could be put into deep storage, which was mostly automotive tools I really don't need at the moment. And the tools that I wanted to have closer at hand, like power tools and things I'm gonna need for the maker type projects we're gonna be doing in this space. You probably can't hear it, but the Bamboo X1 is currently roll cycling through all the filaments in the AMS. It just randomly does that and it drives me nuts when it does it. I'll just be sitting at my desk, nothing happening, and all of a sudden, Seriously, it just randomly does that when it feels like it. Then we moved the shelves. There was the one here that was a dividing wall for the 3D printing side to the more garage side. And now they're both up against the wall. They are making much better use of the space. I just didn't do that earlier because I wanted to have the set backdrop for the other YouTube channel that I don't really make content for anymore. Next thing next, these shelving units had these like wire grate shelves that are usually on them and they're really annoying to put things on like these blow molded cases they get stuck on the grate with their little feet or nubs that might stick off of them it's really annoying i also need a couple of workbenches to have some working surface in here i've got a design in my head for a couple of long narrow ones that can be put together for one large table but that's probably going to be another video for these shelves i got some thin plywood and for a couple of the workbenches that aren't going to matter as much i got some thicker plywood so let's get to cutting and cutting, and cutting, and cutting, and cutting. Doing this by myself took a while, but it got done. And now I have shelves I can actually put things on, slide them in and out of here. So much better now. I don't love the spacing of the way this shelving unit turned out, but it's because I wanted to be able to tuck that large format printer underneath of it and out of the way. It needs to be safe and covered when not in use. And then underneath the other one is my welding bench. Again, tucking that underneath, trying to make the best use of this space that I can. It's hard to give up shelving space, but it'd be even harder to be giving up floor space with those items out in the rest of the area I could be using for working on projects. I also started insulating a little bit better. This space is a uninsulated block building that's open to atmosphere on, let me just show you a diagram and I can show you the outline. All the areas here marked in red are open to atmosphere on the outside and they are uninsulated cinder block. As such, I got some of this polystyrene two inch foam here that it has an R10 rating and I'm literally just wedging it up against the wall. On some of the areas I might run a minimal amount of glue to hold it in place but like right over here next to the garage door, I have it jammed up in there and I put a moving blanket over top of that, which I use those for dropping down sound reverb and all that a little bit. And then the shelving unit is pressed up against it. So it's all sandwiched in there. That one's not going anywhere. And it's all the way up to the ceiling there as well. I also thought about doing the wall behind the couch here, but now I'm thinking I want this to be another filming angle, some different perspective. I can sit down and have a chat with you folks versus always being at my desk. I don't want it to be the same, same in every single video, but I like having the cinder block background and I am renting this space. So building out walls and drywalling and insulating with fiberglass insulation is probably not gonna happen. The goal is to turn this whole space, not just that area over there into somewhere I can come out here. I can flip on a couple of lights. I've already got some studio lights up over here 
and just point a camera at what I'm working on and film it. Not have to worry about having a bunch of junk piled up in the background, anything like that. This to be one big workable studio, which this ain't it. So I'm gonna get back to work cleaning, organizing, moving stuff around in here. I've got to build a new workbench over there for 3D printers to live on. It's also gonna be the dividing wall between the two sides of the shop. So back to it, I go. But first I need lumber for the workbenches I need to build. I mentioned numerous times that I live in the city of Philadelphia and I truly mean that. Like there's the skyline. I'm just at the Lowe's down south here. I've seen somebody on TikTok recently saying, ah, you don't need a pickup truck, you need a Harbor Freight trailer. I submit, you don't need a Harbor Freight trailer, you need a Prius. I mean, I'm not gonna say this is the safest thing a person could do. I would definitely not recommend hitting brakes too hard or your airbag might go off. But as somebody who's lived in this city for a couple of years now, hasn't had a pickup truck that entire time, outside of when I need sheet goods, because I can't fit a four foot wide sheet in this thing, for lumber, I can get it done. Here's me forgetting to turn on the microphone to tell you about the Bora Centipede work stand that unfolds. Boom. It has this work table jig set up as well that you can put on, which I'm gonna put the Evolution chop saw on top of right now. With the lumber acquired and the saw set up, it's time to lay out all my cuts so we can get building this workbench. And then I promptly knocked the camera off of the tape measure cam. <laughs> I haven't done a video about it, but I've been really enjoying this sliding miter saw from Evolution Power Tools. And if you're interested, you can save 5% with the discount code on screen right now. With everything cut, it was time to start putting it all together using some nice heavy duty structural screws and overbuilding the heck out of this bench. definitely overbuilding the heck out of this thing. It's built of four by fours and two by eights, but I want it to be a really solid base. I had printers on a temporary table before and a bunch of my printers are on like garage storage racks that are flimsy. I want a solid base that I could put Vorons on, the Bamboo X1, and not have it shake to all hell. For anybody who's unfamiliar, I had to get this piece of flimsy sheet metal up on the wall. This is actually the backdrop from my original YouTube channel, Hot Rod Hippie, that I used in a third floor bedroom apartment setup to film videos about metal fabrication and custom car building. It's more of a little ironic that I didn't have a workshop, filmed over a hundred videos in a small apartment bedroom, and now that I have a workshop, I'm probably not filming those videos anymore. That's a totally different topic though, but I have this backdrop up homage to the previous channel and it acts as the dividing wall from here to the 3D printing side of the studio. I put a couple of moving blankets on the back side of that sheet metal so I can cut down on reverb for the filming set over here since I am actually speaking at this wall when I'm talking to the camera. I also put this crossbar and vase mount on here so I can mount an LG TV I have on here. Previously I used this Amazon Fire TV that's on this rolling stand, made it feel like I was in school again. And it was handy because I could roll it to wherever I was working and change the angle of it, but I, it ended up sitting in the same place most of the time, so I'm just gonna mount one to the wall for now. Now I've gotta get the plywood tabletop that's gonna go on to here, on here, I could do better than plywood, but I don't want to spend a bunch of money on building this thing, and plywood is easy and will be solid enough once it's screwed into this entire structure. Before I put the worktop on that bench, I want to put these leveling feet on there so I can get this to sit pretty solid and pretty level because the floor in here is not. With the workbench in the position where I want it, the leveling feet are installed, I got it leveled, and put the plywood top on it. Now it's time to actually move these toolboxes into position where I wanted to put them a day and a half ago. In all seriousness, I am glad that I built that wall and workbench before I moved the toolboxes. It gave me just a little more room than I think I wouldn't have had if I moved the toolboxes, but I could be wrong about that, who knows. And with a little bit of moving everything, I got the toolboxes into the position of where they're going to be living now. I wanna shim them and level them a little bit cause the floor is just so uneven right there in the middle of the studio, but they're in their new home. I've already cut a piece of plywood that I'm gonna make a continuous worktop on both of them. So it'll be a full eight foot long. Fun fact that Snap-on and Matco toolbox side by side just happen to be eight feet long. It's gonna make a full work surface workbench out of the both of those because you can never have enough flat surfaces to clutter up with stuff. The last thing I'm gonna do in this video, I forgot to mention earlier, notice how these two shelving units behind me here are different heights? That's because I put a lift kit on this one. 
and I'm gonna jack up this one onto the same kit, AKA a double stack of six by six blocks. Now these are screwed together, they are secured together, and then the shelving unit is screwed to them, and I may yet sh screw the shelving unit to the block wall, just to really solidify everything. The whole point of this was I could either build shelves above these things, or I could jack them up so I could fit more things underneath. As I mentioned earlier, I fit the welding bench and the large format printer underneath these shelving units so they're out of my way. With the three toolboxes moved, the two shelving units up on their lift kits, the dividing wall slash 3D printer workbench built, I think that's gonna be it for this portion of the studio revamp. We have made it way further than I expected to make in one video, or it's been like two and a half days worth of work. Realistically, I could stand to have a larger shop, but I'm working with what I have, and I'm gonna do the best that I can to maximize the space and show you folks how I do that. Realistically, if I had infinite space, I'm sure I would infinitely fill it. I think that's gonna be it for this one. I hope you folks find this actually interesting. I figured I'd bring you some behind the scenes as we're redoing things rather than just a shop tour once I'm done, which we will do, but actually show you the process of building my workshop maker space studio. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please drop it a like. It really helps out. Let me know in the comments. Do you enjoy this type of video? Do you enjoy seeing this process? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Get subscribed to keep up to date with all of the build process and to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt.